As I sadly say goodbye to the world's busiest air show, Oshkosh Air Venture 2022, with over 650,000 people and 3,200 planes, it's time to fly back home to Buffalo. Security was quick, and now that I purposely arrived at the airport eight hours early, I went to go take some pictures and videos of the planes moving around on the ramp. Depending on when you're watching, either that video is coming soon or it's already out. So, after nearly three miles of walking from gate to gate and an unhealthy amount of photos, here's the plane pulling in. It's an 18-year-old 737-800 series, registered as November 33284, operating under the call sign United 2222. Cool flight number. Boarding group two, boarding group two, for Buffalo. Thank you. The legroom is good, 31 inches. The seat is comfortable and clean. Overall, United's economy class is pretty nice. We are not expecting a full flight. We do ask that you take your assigned seats though. And then once the aircraft door closes, if there's aircraft doors closed, just make sure you're remaining in your ticket and cabin. And if you wanted to upgrade to an economy plus seat, the seat thing. I'd like to mention a few things about O'Hare's ATS system that you saw earlier, the airport transit system, or simply just that blue train. It's pretty much brand new, it services all terminals and the Lot F Transportation Center, which is for parking and rental cars. There's barely any signs in the terminal saying that you have to take that train if you want to get to the rental cars, so don't take the bus, just find your way to that somewhat sketchy train instead. It's easier and takes less time, but be aware, it operates on the outside, so you'd have to re-enter security if you wanted to come back into the terminals. Please refer to the safety car near your seat for the operation of the exit doors on this aircraft. I am under the seat in front of you. At United, we're connecting people. Uniting the world and doing it safely. From all of us, thank you and enjoy your flight. We departed about 22 minutes late, thanks to Chicago's infamous long takeoff lines, but arrived about 5 minutes ahead of schedule. Cruising altitude was 35,000 feet, traveling around 550 miles per hour. Surprisingly, even on this late night flight, drinks were served. I usually get juice of some sort, 
but all I could think about was sleep, so only water instead. After walking for 12 hours a day non-stop at the Oshkosh Air Show, and for multiple hours in the terminals, I was already dozing in and out. Unfortunately, since it's really dark out, there really isn't any good footage during cruise. Instead, let's talk about the IFE, or in-flight entertainment system. The flight map was terrible. It showed the plane over Toronto, Canada, when we were actually on approach into Buffalo. Also, the controls randomly double-clicked, making it hard to switch between channels, just like my previous flight. Although it was mostly glitchy, it had a wide selection of channels to watch from. Our descent into Buffalo took us over the city. To be honest, this was a completely uneventful, normal night flight. There was nothing special going on, it was just point A to point B. But my next trip report will not be normal. Take a guess on what airline that will be on. Welcome to Buffalo. Until next time, Oshkosh and Chicago. I'll miss ya. As we quickly taxi into the gate, let's review everything. The crew and staff were polite and helpful, and the seat and cabin environment was comfortable and relaxing, which, in my opinion, is especially important for a late night flight like this one. Like I mentioned earlier, this was a super uneventful flight, so no official detailed score out of a certain amount of points. But if I had to give it a basic rating though, probably a 9.5 out of 10, or 95%. United has been one of those airlines I've flown on the most growing up, and it definitely brings back memories after not flying with them for so long. Now stepping away from the airlines and going towards airports. Buffalo is easy to get around mainly because it's, it's way smaller and easier to navigate. Chicago on the other hand? I had to literally research prior to my trip on how to get to the rental cars, which actually came in handy because there were practically zero terminal signs pointing to the ETS's location and where it even goes to. That weird robot lady voice on the train only says the terminals and lot F, no other details whatsoever. I hope my explanation from the pushback helps a bit if you're one of those people who need it. It gets confusing after a certain point. In fact, that whole airport is just confusing to begin with. When you fly in or out of Chicago, plan accordingly so you don't get lost in the swampland of roads piled on top of each other. Anyways, United gets a big thumbs up from me, and I sure cannot wait to fly them again soon.
Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, explore from above, and I'll see everybody in the next one. Take care.